What's up YouTube, TCM here back with another video. And today we're gonna to be looking at open source software. Open source software is used in a lot of modern day development and you could have hundreds if not thousands of open source libraries in your code at any given time. And this is awesome because it eases a little bit of the work on the development side. You don't have to develop everything from scratch, but at the same time, it brings a whole slew of potential vulnerabilities and security issues that you have to deal with. So we're going to talk about some of those vulnerabilities, like outdated software, like transitive dependencies, like even insecure code, and how we can fix that, how we can do vulnerability management and triaging, how we can automate our CI CD pipeline, and we can just make this a lot easier on us from a development standpoint and from a security standpoint. So if you're at all interested in security, DevSecOps, you're a developer, this is a video that you want to check out because it's going to make your life a lot easier. As always, we have at least one video a week on cybersecurity concepts and topics. And if you're interested in learning more about cybersecurity and secure development, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've got my spectacles on so I can actually see what I'm teaching. And we're gonna go through on TryHackMe. And if you've never used TryHackMe before, I'll link in the description below, but they have a free side of their platform and this is on the free side. So you can actually follow along if you want. And we're going to be doing a room called Sneak Open Source. Now, what we're not going to do today is do a full walkthrough of this. I will show you the answers as I click through. We'll go through some of the introductions, some of those other things. But what we're not going to do is just go step by step because it's a lot of reading. And so I'd rather give you a high level overview as opposed to reading all of this and actually show you more of the hands on technical stuff as opposed to going through step by step. Right. I think that's a little bit more entertaining. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the room like that. So we're doing sneak open source. I will leave a link to this in the description below. Sneak is actually releasing a bunch of different rooms for try hack me. They're going to have four at the time of this recording. They have two. So they're going to have four rooms all dedicated to DevSecOps and they have a DevSecOps path on try hack me as well. And so what we're looking at here is we have a new hire. Uh, our new hire is going to be Jessica. Now, Jessica just got hired. She was previously a student doing comp sci. That's her background. Now she's a, a junior application security engineer. And so this is just basically saying, hey, meet Jessica. Cool. Uh, so here is the more meet Jessica, a ju junior security engineer. She's working at this company called Patch Corp. And her CISO just assigned her with the task of improving the security posture at Patch Corp. So security posture is not great. She's realized that, hey, some teams didn't have dependencies and package scanners. And so there are potential vulnerabilities within their code. Okay, again, no answer needed here. Okay, so this next task here is talking about the open source software and security risks associated with it. Again, I'm not going to read you line by line, but these are core risks. Hey, a large attack surface. Yeah, if you're using 100 plus libraries out there, uh, it's going to be hard to manage all of those easily. And so the more libraries that you're using, uh, the more possibility that there is out there of this type of risk of a vulnerability appearing of something happening or becoming outdated. And so managing that becomes tough. Uh, the rapid release cycle, same thing. Hey, these are modern day types of software and they are coming out rapidly. If you're not managing this, it's going to be very hard to keep up. Uh, we also have the idea of transitive dependencies. So you have vulnerabilities that are nested within other dependencies, and that can easily go unnoticed. And then again, limited visibility. If you have a lot of these different types of open source software, uh, it's going to be hard to manage them all. And so there are tools that are out there like Sneak that can utilize an automation platform, and it just goes and looks and finds the vulnerabilities for you as they appear. We actually use Sneak at TCM Security. That's not a lie. We've been using it since the start of our development process, and we continue to use it uh, because it's that great. I get emails anytime that there is any sort of uh, dependency issues or vulnerability that's found, and we're able to go in and immediately patch it. It gets a lot cooler than that. Uh, we do have chat automation set up, and this goes into some chat bots and chat ops and different concepts here a little bit. Uh, but we have that all set up for alerting as well. So. It's great, it's automated. There's a ton of cool things that it can do. Uh, but I'm gonna show you kind of step by step all the process here. Uh, so one, we're looking at this file here, which is a package.json file. Uh, if you're watching this, you're a developer, you probably know what this is, but hey, we've got our dependencies that are for our, uh, our files here. 
And so these are our JavaScript libraries that we want to use. So like colors, express, Lodash. I see Lodash a lot on pen tests and engagements, and it's, I feel like a lot of times out of date. And so it's very, very common to see that. And so we could take this and run it through a tool like Sneak. So that brings us to this next task here, which is to sign up for Sneak and for GitHub or something similar. And I'm just gonna do this because if you look at this, it looks overwhelming, but I'm gonna show you that it's actually pretty easy to do. So let me open up a tab here. So I did sign up for GitHub. I just called it Sneak Hacks. You can go look at the public repository if you want. I just called it Sneak. And if you look at it here, all it is is this package.json that we just saw. You can come in here and see, I just put it in here just like this. And now all I have to do is go over to Sneak so if we go to app.sneak.io, we go here and just get a sign up page or to sneak.io and hit sign up. Uh, here you can choose what you want to use to sign up with. You can do SSO through a lot of different things like Google, uh, but I'm just going to use GitHub because it's pretty easy. So if I come in here and just say GitHub, uh, all we got to do is load this, which will just take a second. And then it's going to say, OK, uh, say no to this and we'll do no to this for now. OK, I'm going to say next step for GitHub. I'm going to allow private and public repositories and I'm going to authenticate GitHub here. And so that's going to bring this in and it's going to say, hey, go ahead and import your scan first. Realize I have not cut anything or any edits here. I'm just going through this process. And so it's going to show that there's no projects yet associated. It's just going to take a second. If I come in here and refresh, it will have it really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and click on package.json. Uh, you can see that it says, please don't hack me, sir. Please. That's a throwaway email. You can email it if you want. I probably will never see it. Uh, but if you come in here and you look, it gives you the issues that are here. We've got 34 issues with just this package.json. That's crazy. Uh, no criticals, 15 highs, 15 or 17 mediums, two lows. Okay. And so this is organized in a nice way. Like if we come through here, we can see what's the most critical or highest vulnerability, I should say. This is not a critical, but a high severity here is Mongoose. And it says why? Well, we've got prototype pollution here. And it was introduced in 5.9.7 and it's fixed in 5.1320, 6.11.3, so forth. Okay. Uh, you've got a proof of concept, which is really cool as well. And you can come in here and look at the score. So it gives you this priority score. It says how it's calculated. Hey, there's a proof of concept exploit available, meaning that there is somebody that has released the code for this that shows how to actually exploit this. Uh, it does have a patch available to it. And the CVSS score is an eight. So that's pretty, pretty high. In fact, it is high. And so, uh, yeah, we've got a pretty severe vulnerability here and we want to fix that. What's really, really cool is you can come in here and say, oh, what is prototype pollution? I want to learn more about that. And you can click through this and Sneak has their own kind of like university or, or whatever it is. And you can see like I'm getting authenticated here, but hey, what's prototype pollution? And it gives you the basics, okay? And then you can come through here and read about it. And it gives you even a command line that you can type in and uh, have a terminal for, right? And go through this whole process here uh, to learn about prototype pollution. I think that's really, really cool. Uh, developers especially aren't getting the secure coding training that they should. Um, universities are still behind and uh, there's a lot of good training that's out there on this type of stuff. Really quick small shout out is if you go to our Cyber Mentor channel and you just type in something like prototype pollution, there's a good chance we actually have a video on it as well. So you can see Alex has done a video on prototype pollution two months ago. Also, hey, learn prototype pollution in 60 seconds. Okay, there's tons and tons of information out there for these types of vulnerabilities and the other types of vulnerabilities you're going to see in this video. Okay, moving back, what's really cool is we have the ability to come in here and say, fix these vulnerabilities. Now, if I click this, it's going to attempt or offer, I should say, not just attempt, offer to fix all of these vulnerabilities for us. Now, as a developer, and if you're going through this, you don't want to just go fix all the vulnerabilities at once because you don't know what that's going to do. You could break packages, dependencies, all that fun stuff. It would be a nightmare. So of course you want to have a dev environment where you test these things out. So I'm actually going to back up here. But what is cool is if we go back and we say, okay, well, I want to fix one vulnerability, right? Like I've done my research. Let's go ahead and put this to a uh, PR, right? So we can do a pull request. You'd say, hey, I'm going to open a, a fixed pull request here. 
and it's going to automatically do a pull request for you in your GitHub. How cool is that? So what's going to happen is, hey, it's going to upgrade from 2.4.2 to 4.17.17. You could see what commits it's making in here. You could see what files it's changing in here, right? So it's coming in here and it's changing this low dash here and it's changing the dependencies right there. Really, really cool. Uh, so I can come in here and say, oh, OK, I'm going to go ahead and just merge this request, right? Um, so I can merge that and I can commit this merge. And perfect, we are successfully merged and closed. And just like that, I just fix one of the vulnerabilities within my program. So now if I come back over here, hey, fix package.json to reduce vulnerabilities, come back in here and you can see that sure enough, my Lodash has been changed to the right version. So that's really, really nice. And I didn't have to really do anything. And so let's go back into our try hack me. So if we go through here and we're looking at the results from the dashboard, similar to what we just kind of looked at, right? Uh, but hey, there's also an IDE and they're going on about some code issues here and what happens if you have code, because so far we just talked about dependencies and we should look at code too. So let's open Visual Studio Code. Okay, so what I have done here is I have a workspace Okay, and in our extensions, if you're familiar with Visual Studio, you can come in here and you can just type in sneak as an example, okay? And I installed this sneak security plugin, okay? And then all I did was take a vulnerable uh, set of code, actually the code that they provided, and threw it into my code editor here. So I'm in my IDE and it's telling me specifically what my issues are, okay? So if I go back to sneak, it's saying, hey, you have a path traversal issue here. So if you're not familiar with what a path traversal is, it's where, hey, uh, if I come in and I'm going to like a website, let's just say HTTPS, uh, we'll use Google.com, right? And I can come in here and do a dot dot slash attack of some sort and then get to Etsy password. Uh, that would be very bad because you're not actually sanitizing your user input here. Uh, and that's exactly what's happening. And it's saying, hey, you've got path traversal issues. And it's pointing to you where where is it right here okay and it says here's the analysis we're seeing the issues on line 9 basically through 14 and it's giving you some examples of how you can fix your code which is really nice as well uh, and again if you want to learn more about the vulnerability same concept as the prototype pollution you can click on this it will show you exactly what the issue is and give you an in-depth explanation and all I did was just code in my IDE. So this is automatically searching for vulnerabilities for me while I'm doing that. If I were to open that package.json file in here, I'd have the same thing. I would have my open source security issues, right? So not only am I seeing open source issues, I'm seeing code security issues and I'm not paying for anything right now. Uh, this is fantastic. Okay, so coming back, we have questions here that we've been answering along the way, right? Like what's the vulnerable package of Lodash? Okay, 2.4.2. A what type of att attacker vulnerability can an attacker use here? It's prototype pollution. And so we're learning these things as we go. Um, but also, hey, there's a lot of information here about triaging. It's saying, yeah, I want to prioritize based on CVSS scores, right? The more critical the vulnerability, it, the, the more you want to fix it, the faster you want to fix it. And uh, there's a lot of different things to consider. One of the things that we do is when we're interviewing people for jobs at TCM security, we ask them, how do they evaluate risk? Very important question. How do you decide if you have two vulnerabilities, which one you fix first? Okay, you have to look at the likelihood, the impact, the, uh, you know, the CVSS score is really big. And what what is the cost of fixing it too? Uh, there's a lot of different things that you have to think about before you just go and fix a vulnerability. And so it says right here, hey, not every vulnerability poses an equal risk. And that is true. Okay, so what's the exploitability? What's the likelihood it's going to happen and so forth? You could have a critical vulnerability, but if it's tied behind a VPN and only one user can ever access that and there's MFA and everything else, that's probably not as severe as a fix as a high vulnerability where everybody can access it and see that vulnerability, right? So likelihood, impact, uh, you should be considering those. But this shows you what I showed you. Hey, how do you open a PR uh, through this? How do you address vulnerabilities? I think it's really good to come read through this stuff. If you're newer to DevOps, fantastic information in here okay this as well hey like uh circle ci not the only tool right with the the orbs but sneak has an orb for circle ci so if you want to 
uh, automate some of your, your CI CD pipeline, you can, and you can use a sneak orb to do that. Really neat. Um, the chat features and continuous monitoring. This is what we do at TCM Security. Again, we absolutely love the chat ops feature of Sneak and we integrate it with our Slack like you're seeing here and we get alerts for all of our ears. Like all the time, you know, dependencies are coming up and they're, they're having vulnerabilities. We're going in and we're fixing them. And guess what? We don't pay anything for Sneak. We've got a small development team. We're four people. Uh, sneak is free for us and it's fantastic. Okay, and the last thing here is, hey, how do I establish best practices? Again, I would read through this, really take this to heart because this is fantastic information that's here. Okay, last thing here, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, but if we come in here, we just type in sneak, right? We can come to the modules that they have for specifically for sneak, which is awesome. Right now we've got the open source, which we've completed. And then there's the code one as well, which gets more into what I showed you with the Visual Studio Code side of things. So really neat. There's two more modules that are coming here very, very soon. And you should definitely check those out as well. Again, entirely free. You just have to sign up for Try Hack Me, come do this room. Uh, Sneak is free and GitHub is free and all this stuff is free and this education and this content is all free. It's amazing. Okay, so we just walked through very, very quickly and simply uh, vulnerable code, right? So if you're using GitHub, if you're using similar tooling and you're not having some sort of vulnerability scanner out there, Sneak is a great, great resource and they are the sponsor of this video today. And we do use them at TCM Security. I have a long lasting relationship with Sneak. They're fantastic. And again, we don't pay anything because we have a small development team. Uh, for bigger development teams, Sneak is worth every single penny that they have because they can find vulnerabilities for you. One exploit, one critical issue, one incident at your organization is going to be so much more expensive than any of this automated security that you're getting here. And so think about that. Uh, if you're not familiar with secure coding concepts, really, you should dive into this stuff because it is the future, it is important, and we're only getting better as hackers at exploiting these things. So as defenders, we need to be better. As programmers, we need to be better as well. So uh, think through that. You can sign up again, free. Just use the link in the description below and go check out Sneak. Go check out Try Hack Me's uh, Sneak Rooms as well and, and go learn how to use the platform. It takes literally minutes to just integrate we did it live in real time and had no issues. And so that is it for this video. As always, if you like the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And again, thank you to Sneak for sponsoring this video today. Uh, love the platform, love the team, love everything about it, and uh, we'll continue to use it in the future. So until next time, my name is Heath Adams, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.